Hello and welcome to this uh, small overview that I'm going to do and I'm going to talk about a procedural um, sci-fi material for vehicles, spacecrafts and similar. Um, this is how it will look. It's kind of like this very dirty uh, material with some procedural edges and shit. It's not going to be a material tutorial, it's more or less like I'm going to show how I created the material, go into depth into some things that I did that can be re re replicated, and in general just give an overview. It's not really a tutorial because um, it's a very s specific material in that sense because you, ca you can replace certain stuff I did procedurally with um, image textures pretty easy and it probably would look better, but I like to do stuff procedurally, so we decided procedurally. Anyways, let's dive into it. Um, for that, we're just gonna select this one to preview all the materials. Um, so yeah, we have, first of all, we have, this is our tree we're going to look at. We have three stages. We have kind of like the edge bevel, which you can see um, pretty well, not in this mode, but if we go into render board, you can see the edge bevel pretty well, this red this right here. Um, we then have the dust material which is on which is on here which is kind of like I think we need more stuff for that to really see that. Let's take two. Um, and then we have obviously the main color itself which is also procedural and you can change every part of it. Um, let's start with the main color. First of all to, for detail we have two noise maps. Um, Voronoi and a normal no noise texture. These are for the scratches. So this is basically just where we get like small scratches, um, just as like a small like bump highlight. Um, like if we ha if we have a look at this, right? You can pretty easily see how this is working together. Then we have the main base, the main color, which is kind of like a very stony texture, maybe even. Like we have some more highlights and some just in general like noise highlights and these together kind of look like this. Um, and this is basically all base color, which then goes from the, and then we mix it with um, the top part, who also, which also is providing the scratches, to get something like this. Here we then have our scratches, which are obviously going into the metallic as well through this thing, because obviously when you have paint onto something and you have scratched underneath that, that's obviously the metal that's gonna show through. And the scratches are also go into the bump map, which um, looks like this when it's final. Um, this is the first part. This is basically like just, just the main color, um, the base layer. Then we have um, the, the, the dust. For this, we are using two noise maps. Um, basically a very similar noise map to what we did before down here. Just it's smaller scale and this is going into an ambient occlusion. Basically what this is doing, it is just putting it into places um, where dust would be. For example, if we Look at this now. I think we have to press render for this. I think ambient occlusion doesn't show in. You see, like you have here, you have a lot of dust. You have here, you have a lot of. Basically, in places where dust would be, this map puts dust here, here, here. And that's basically all it does. And we can control how this dust looks with this color ramp, basically. Yeah, makes sense. So this is how, how our dust looks, more or less. Um, we then multiply something in, and that is and 
that is something like this, which is basically just there for edge imperfections. So basically the dust we have basically gets multiplied with this. So it just looks less straight and just has more variety in the, in the, in the thing it's, itself. Um, and yeah, that's our dust map. And if we go back to the whole thing, you can see, you can pretty easily spot out where the dust is around these parts, around these parts. It just adds like v v variety to an otherwise pretty boring material. Now we come to the main part though, and there's the edge bevel, which is done with this node right here, the bevel node. Um, again, we are just using um, noise textures to create edge imperfections. Um, like you can maybe see here, it is basically just a lot of random things put over each other to have as much variety as possible. So this looks something like this then. And this just goes into a multiply node to get more contrast out of it. And then this goes into an edge bevel. And this edge bevel, basically, what it does is, if we look at this map, it just takes these edges, it just applies our noise map onto these edges. And what it does is, if we pull up the gamma from, 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 from that, you get this beautiful highlights, which are distorted by the noise maps we created here. So basically this setup just distorts the edge bevel we see here. No, sorry, we, we see here. So all these edges we see just get distorted by this noise map back here, which then creates this 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 material. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. This is how basically all of this was textured. You just change this color ramp right here, which is responsible for the for the for the, for the main color, and then you have a completely new new material, and this is. 100% procedural. This works on every object you can imagine. It's flawless. Sometimes you have a few issues like uh, with the edge bevel, but it's not that bad. For example, I can't really see it great. I just do this. For example, here, you see it's a bit iffy with the edge bevel and the dust, but it's not bad per se like it's it, it's it still works as a as a material so you could probably go in there and make a custom material for that if you would care but this is a pretty simple way of just building a pro fully procedural cipher material that you can just slap onto anything and it looks honestly pretty great it gives the material for not using image maps at all a lot of depth in my in my opinion and it works really really good as a base texture if you want to do like concept art and not and you're not going for photorealistic rendering or something so yeah i hope you enjoyed this short little overview over my material um and yeah uh, i will probably talk about this project as a whole in a separate video that's probably going to be about the the rig itself and how I build it and design choices behind um, certain stuff I, I did. But this is it for now. Um, thank you for watching and have a great day.